Beware the bloggers who claim that LeBron James is about to re-sign with the Lakers. That's not quite true. We'll explain. Andy Enfield drops a subtle hint that Bronny James is better off at USC, and we know how Austin Eckler can stick it to the Chargers. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports scene in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is March 7th, 2024, and if you like being in the know about LA sports, click the clack the like button. Click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that and let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. You know I look forward to hearing from you. I am a lonely guy. But before we go through the news and notes, we'll go through the scoreboard. Bad look for the Lakers last night. Bad look. They were getting killed by Sacramento. They kind of made the final score a little more respectable. Uh, LeBron James limped off in the third quarter. He said it'd be fine, but the uh, end result, Sacramento 130, Lakers 120. LeBron James scores 31 points. Rhea Hachimura added 29. Anthony Davis nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Kawhi Leonard scored 28 points as the Clippers defeated Houston 122-116. to The Clippers did, in fact, rally. They were down by as many as 20 points in the game. Kudos to them. Meanwhile, today, pretty good slate. Ottawa's in town. They'll play the Kings at 7.30. Has Camp Talbot reestablished himself in goal after that disastrous January? He has stopped 176 of 185 shots. That is a 951 save percentage. Meanwhile, fifth-ranked Arizona is in town to play UCLA at 6.30. The Bruins are 14 and 15. They are in danger of finishing below 500 for just the fifth time in 75 years. And Arizona State is at USC at 8 o'clock. Now, let's get to the news. Because today, what I want to do is break down all of LeBron James's options. Because yesterday, two ESPN scribes, they looked at the options and speculated that the signs point to LeBron James signing an extension with the Lakers. Now, I say speculated because the moment that they came out with that story, a bunch of bloggers came out there or who were apparently illiterate because they said, oh, LeBron James will sign with the Lakers. The signing is imminent. No, it is not. No, it's not. So before you get dragged into this innocent looking rabbit hole, which is actually in reality a pit of lukewarm turd, let's go with what ESPN actually reported and broke down. James has until June 29th, for example, to opt into his ne uh, to the uh, final year of his contract with LA or become a free agent. That in and of itself will tell you that a signing is not imminent because he's gonna let the drama play out. LeBron James has a lengthy reputation as a bit of a drama queen, a bit of a passive aggressive kind of guy, trying to see what else he can get. It's his right, it's a, he's a free agent if he bops out, et cetera, et cetera. So the max he can get would be from the Lakers three years at 162 million. If he decides to opt out and go to another team, he gets something comparable, it's just not as much, as three years at 170 million. What's five million between friends, am I right? But what he could also do is sign a two-year deal for 104 million with a player option to opt out in year two. Now, why would he do that? Well, the answer, if you've been following this endless LeBron saga at all, is simple. Bronny, he's a dad, remember? The whole thing about, oh, I want to rebuild that whole Ken Griffey Jr., Ken Griffey Sr. thing that happened in Major League Baseball, wouldn't that just be nice? It would for him. He wants to do it. Assume Bronny James experiences a major growth spurt as a college player next year. Assuming, of course, Bronny James goes back to USC. Yeah, James has been trying to will that into existence. 
So then you also not only have to look at things from a numbers perspective, you have to look at things from a Laker perspective. LeBron James wants to win titles, which is good because so do the Lakers. You can't say that about a lot of NBA teams out there. So in fact, they do have something in common with LeBron, not just the fact that being in LA, we know how to spin ourselves a story or two with a lot of drama. So there is that. To keep James, they have to show him that they can compete. Now, at the current moment, the Lakers have as a draft asset, a bunch of uh, contracts that they can trade and just one first round pick, which would be desirable. However, according to ESPN, on draft night, they would go up from one tradable first round pick to three on NBA draft night this summer. As for the tradable contracts, they have 10 players that you could say would be tradable. In other words, players who have contracts that range anywhere from $2 million all the way up to 19. Now keep in mind, they do have to be mindful of the salary cap with any trade that they make. This is, I'm saying this to you in case this whole idea of let's go get LeBron a third superstar pops up. They tried that a couple of years ago with Russell Westbrook. Westbrook simply didn't fit in. You know the rest. But they could try to rebuild that third superstar thing like you saw out in Miami. And if that's what it takes, they would have options to do that. And then you have to go, well, okay, well, how much leverage does LeBron James actually have? This is where you look at the other teams. And frankly, the other teams just don't match up that well for LeBron James. There's going to be three teams with the cap space to go for that max deal this summer. The only one that you would imagine out of Orlando, Philadelphia, or Oklahoma City that LeBron James would even consider entertaining is Philadelphia. I mean, I will, tell, I will grant you that Oklahoma City uh, has a nice looking little roster out there. But does anybody really see LeBron James leaving Los Angeles for Oklahoma? Have you ever been to Oklahoma? I have. I could not wait to leave Oklahoma. There's no bleeping way LeBron James is going to give the, everything up for a lifestyle where he's sitting on a porch, a picking and a grinning. It's not happening. So Philadelphia is potentially an option, but you've heard Philly talking about how much they want the Clippers' Paul George. I don't even think Philly thinks they're even remotely a possibility for LeBron James. And of course, Orlando, Central Florida, nice place. Orlando doesn't know how to play basketball. So there's that. You might remember that there was an ESPN story that made a lot of sturm and drong about how Golden State called and asked if they could have him in, a tra in the trade. Cross Golden State off the list. Yes, the Warriors did make a phone call, but ESPN, after saying, oh my God, he could leave for Golden State. ESPN also reported that LeBron James did, in fact, say, I do not want to play for the Warriors, that he likes being in L.A. There's a shock. Bet you never thought you'd hear that, huh? After all of that hot air. Now, ESPN thinks the Knicks could put together a trade package, but then the Lakers would actually have to want to trade LeBron James. Here's a spoiler. They don't. So yeah, the odds are that LeBron James will stay in LA. But when, broad, uh, when bloggers, I should say, say it's a fait accompli, that it's going to happen any day now, that's not true. So these are your facts. Let it marinate. Try not to get too far out of your skis. And of course, as we might imagine, a big part of this equation is Bronny James. Over at USC, Andy Enfield is pe preaching patience with Bronny James. And I realize that USC basketball has stunk up the court this year, but we should always cheer when common sense prevails, preaching patience. I get that Bronny is the son of the NBA's all-time leading game uh, scorer, but the dude went through cardiac arrest less than a year ago, and he's only averaging five points a game. 
isn't that a little much to assume he could ball alongside his father on the Lakers? Now, Enfield told a website called The Ringer, quote, as all freshmen, you go through a learning curve, and because he joined the team late in midseason, it was more difficult for him because he had missed so much time. It's okay to go through this learning curve. You're a freshman, unquote. Now, Enfield says Bronny James has a high ceiling and is all about the team. But I do think it's prudent to ask, doesn't it sound a little bit like Enfield is hinting at the entire James family that Bronny needs to return? I mentioned last weekend that we've been deluding ourselves into thinking that Bronny James can be one and done. That's a delusion. That's ridiculous. The name alone, oh, it must make him a lottery pick. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And I want to repeat something that I heard recently from Doug Gottlieb, a former college player and Fox Sports host. Gottlieb thinks Bronny James could eventually be an NBA prospect, but he's not now because Bronny James is so focused on his overall game that he doesn't dominate in anything. If you're going to be one and done, you have to dominate in something, right? Scoring, rebounding, playmaking. What does Bronny James actually excel at to where you could say he's elite? It's not there yet because he's building his overall game. You could easily see Bronny James starting next year for the Trojans, but none of that is true now. So he is not an NBA prospect now. I was a lot meaner about it last week, by the way. There's a clip that surfaced, by the way, where Washington State coach Kyle Smith told USC forward DJ Rodman, quote, you didn't deserve this win, unquote. And there are people that are trying to make a deal out of it. It's not. Rodman transferred to USC from the Cougars program. The entire quote was, quote, thank God you didn't get that win. You didn't deserve it. But he's a good kid. And he gave me a little dap on the way out, unquote. Translation. They're two people who knew each other and busted each other's chops as a joke. It's okay. CBSSports.com listed spots that they believe free agent running back Austin Eckler would land should he decide not to re-sign with the Chargers, which I believe is pretty much going to happen. Not signing with the Chargers, that is. Still on cold meds. I'm not saying that there isn't a market for Austin Eckler, but it isn't a big market, and the free agent list is absolutely outstanding. Eckler simply isn't as good as Derrick Henry, or Saquon Barkley, or Josh Jacobs. Get that out of your head, it's not true. So CBS included the LA Rams as a possibility. The idea, if Eckler went to the Rams, would be, oh, he'd be a change of pace back up for Kyron Williams. Uh, Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford would get the ball to Eckler. And oh, by the way, he wouldn't have to move out of L.A. Sounds totally cool. Totally skeptical it happens. Here's why. Not saying it's impossible. Skeptical it happens. Eckler wants to get paid. He wants to get paid. <laughs> Remember, he tried to lead a revolt of running backs last offseason to get more pay. Viva la revolution! The aristocracy, though, and the bourgeoisie shut that one down kind of pronto. So Eckler, he wants a multi-year deal that would lead to generational wealth. As for now, I would say Houston has the most cap space and they need a back. But they could have any one of those other backs that I previously mentioned. So Eckler is not exactly priority one. The most likely outcome... Eckler finds out that there isn't a market for running backs who can't rush for a thousand yards. So he pulls a Drew Tranquil and signs with Kansas City just so he can stick it to the Bolts next year. I'm not saying it will happen. That's my belief. Signing with the Rams, that's not sticking it to the Chargers. Signing with a divisional rival threatening to three-peat, oh, that's sticking it to the Chargers. With the trade deadline in the NHL coming on Friday, we've previously established that the Kings are right up against the salary cap wall. So up against the wall that if it were an episode of Cops, you'd swear the Kings were under arrest. With that said, they made a series of moves yesterday that might clear a little space in advance of the deadline. First, they put 
both defensive Jacob Movier and forward Jared Anderson Dolan on waivers. But after a mere couple of hours, both players cleared waivers. The Kings signed Movier to a two-year contract extension. It's a very cap-friendly deal. I believe it's the league minimum. Not that it will grant the Kings space for a big move at the trade deadline, but it helps. They do like him a lot. He's not a defenseman that makes big hits or quarterbacks the power play. You just don't notice him because he's effective at his job. We've also spent so much time talking about the Kings salary cap woes that we assumed it would be a problem in, pertu in perpetuity. Boy, this cold beds. Anyway, look, it's not true. The Kings will not be in salary cap hell next year. There's going to be a rise in the salary cap. It's expected to go up by about $4 million. They're going to get another $3 million in space from a lower-priced extension signed by Andrzej Kopitar. And if they let Victor Arvidsson go as a free agent, that's another $4.5 million right there. So it could swell all the way up to $11.5 million. So what is the future for the Kings in net? Talbot is 36, and both the injured Phoenix Copley and Dave Rittich are journeymen. The Athletic ranked the top 15 NHL goalie prospects and suggested that Kings prospect Eric Portillo is just 14th. <coughs> Here's the deal. He's big, uh, so he can play deep in the net, cover a lot of it up just with his size. However, he will let in the occasional weak goal. So in other words, you want to see more from him, but he's a little too inconsistent. Major League Soccer fined LAFC manager Steve Chirundolo 10 grand for calling it, quote, an absolute joke and, quote, an absolute disgrace for the team to play in the snow Saturday up in Salt Lake City, which resulted in a 3-0 loss. Let's just say I made a few friends among the LAFC fan base over the week. Ones that demanded that the league build domed stadiums. Or even more extreme, contract cold weather teams. Because, oh, they didn't want their tootsies in the powder. So look, I want to repeat, for the record, I want to be fair with LAFC fans because they are Angelinos. But I apologize for absolutely nothing. You guys are out of your minds. Nothing I said, nothing I tweeted. No apologies. You play soccer in the snow. There is a reason for an orange soccer ball. It was designed for playing soccer in the snow. There is video footage of Chirondolo in the Bundesliga in a game in the snow. He has been in the snow. And if you criticize the refs or the league, you will always get fined. It doesn't matter if it's MLS, Major League Baseball, the NFL, the NBA. Criticize anybody, you get fined. Bottom line, LAFC had a bad day. In match day three, life sometimes sucks. You have to get over it. It's time to grow up. Finally, The Athletic is backing off a report that suggested free agent Carlos Vela, who for years was the face of LAFC, was nearing a contract with San Jose. At the moment, there are no leads where Vela will sign, but you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Talk to me about LeBron James's future, if it's going to be with the Lakers, or for that matter, Bronny James's future, if it's going to be on an NBA court at all. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Cortel Queso production. Take care.